our Sound for Video session. Today's the 6th of May, 2018. In this segment, what we're going to do is take a look at output routing. Now, we're going to use the Zoom F8 as our example. However, this generally applies to most field recorders in this sort of range and above. So any of the professional recorders will work in a very similar fashion. So what we learn here can really be applied to those as well. First of all, what is output routing and why do you care? What it is, is that you decide which of the tracks in your multi-track recorder will play in the headphones, which ones will play in the main outputs, and which ones will play in the sub outputs. Now, of course, to the main outputs, you may run that to a camera. You may run the sub output to wireless sound via ComTech for the producer and director and maybe a script supervisor. You may also even send that to the boom operator. So in each of those cases, you may want to send a different set of tracks to help them do their job the best. So first, let's do a little review and talk a little bit about polyphonic recording in recorders like the Zoom F8, Zoom F4, in all the sound devices, mix pre's, and the sound devices, recorders above that, Zaxcom, so on and so forth. It applies to all of them, really. When you're doing a polyphonic recording, that means you're recording multiple tracks. So it may be two, it may be even more than that. In the case of the Zoom F8, it can record up to 10 tracks simultaneously. And of those, there are eight different inputs, so it can record each of those independently, plus it can record a mix left and right, which is a combination that you specify of all of these eight different tracks. So that's what a polyphonic file is. Now, the reason I wanted to review that is that it's important to keep all that in mind. The first two tracks on a polyphonic recording are typically, not always, but typically the stereo mix, the left and right channel. Then you have the isolated channels, each of the microphone input channels recorded after that, if you're recording that way. Now, the reason it's important to review that before we talk about routing is that it's important to keep that in mind. So the mix track, again, is a combination of all of these. And the mix track is defined by where you set the fader on each of the isolated channels. So the when you set the fader to, say, minus 10 dB on channel number one here, what that means is you're not changing the recorded level for channel number one, you're just changing the amount of channel one that is sent to the mix track. So important to keep that in mind as well, because that's gonna become pretty important when we start talking about pre-fader and post-fader. Now, one of the biggest questions you have to ask yourself is what does the production require? What does this job require that I deliver at the end? And that's going to help you decide how you set up your routing. So let's jump in. First of all, let's go into the menu here. We're gonna go into the output menu. And the first thing we have in the output menu is the headphones. And this is where we can actually set the headphone routing. So we're going to come in here and you see this screen. Now, this screen looks really complicated. <laughs> it's actually not really complicated. It's actually fairly straightforward. So what is represented here are each of the individual isolated channels. So channels one through eight, plus the left and right mix, plus the main outputs, plus the sub outputs. So there's a main one and main two, that's left and right typically. And then there's sub one and sub two. That's a 3.5 millimeter output on the Zoom F8. So what you can do is you can scroll through each of these and you can tell the Zoom F8 which of the individual channels or the mix tracks you want to send to your headphones. Or do you want to listen to the output? Or do you want to listen to the sub output? You have all those options. So the default, as you can see here, is the left and right post fader. If it's blue above, let me just show you that. See on channel one, it's now blue on the top half of the square. Bottom half of the square is now red. So the blue represents pre-fader, red represents post-fader, and clear means you're not going to listen to that at all. So the default again here is that it's going to be post-fader, left channel in the left ear of the headphone, and post-fader, right channel of the mix track in the right ear of your headphone. So in this case, if I put my headphones on right now, I'm listening to the mix track. In the left ear, I'm getting the left mix. In the right ear, I'm getting the right mix. That's the default. Now, let's talk about um, other situations you may want to set up. So sometimes, in my cases, I may want to listen on my headphones to the boom microphone in my left ear and all of the isolated channels in my right ear. Because for me, in most cases, the boom is going to be the most important mic. And I also am using that to gauge you know, do I have the boom placed appropriately? Am I actually getting enough sound that I'm trying to gather on the boom pole? And so what I'll do is here, I'll say I want the pre-fader 
boom in my left ear, because I have the boom on channel one in this case. Then what I might say going down here is I might want pre-fader on these three lavaliers. So I have three lavaliers, say I have three talent in this particular piece. They have lavalier, wireless lavalier microphones on channels two, three, and four. So now when I listen to this on my headphones, what I'm getting in my left ear is I'm hearing just the boom microphone, regardless of what its fader is set to. And I'm hearing the wireless microphones, two through four, in my right ear, again, regardless of what their faders are set to. So I'm not listening at all to the mix. I'm listening to the isolated channels, the boom on my left ear and the other three wireless mics in my right ear. Now, if on the other hand, you wanted to listen to the, these channels post fader, because for example, you wanted to see how much of this mic you were sending to the mix, you would press it again until you got a red uh, lower half of the box there. And I could do the same thing here for these wireless mics as well. So that's all post fader. Now, typically I'm not going to do that. I'm almost always going to listen to them pre fader because I essentially want to make sure that I'm getting enough of them. Um, just a, you know, a good, good signal from each of those channels at all. And then I'm going to worry about the mix independent of that. So what's interesting about this is you can see there are multiple settings here. So if I press the fast forward, I can now make a different setting for number two, which means I can more quickly switch between the headphone mix that I'm listening to. So if I come back to one, you can see it saved our settings again, boom in the left channel, pre fader wireless in the right channel, um, pre fader for all of those as well. So hopefully that makes sense that those are kind of the two main uh, scenarios that I would use in terms of headphone mixes. If you have other ways you like to do it, go ahead and leave a comment down below. It'll be really interested to hear how you use that as well. Okay, if we come back out to the output menu, we can also choose um, our main output routing. So these are the two small XLR outputs on the side here. And typically I would use this to send the signal to a camera. Cameras typically have two inputs and so I can send a mix to them. So really the question you have to ask yourself here is what are you doing with the main mix? And sometimes you may not even be using the main outputs in which case this is completely irrelevant. However, if you are trying to send audio to a camera, for example, just sort of think it through. What do you wanna to send to the camera? Do you wanna send the isolated individual channels or do you wanna send a mix? Typically in most of the productions I've worked on, they may want a feed of the audio on the camera so that they can do the initial cut of the video using the camera clips and not have to worry about syncing audio yet. And then the post audio person can worry about syncing the audio later on. So that's a pretty common workflow actually. And in that case, what I would want to send is I would wanna send the left and right mix, as you can see here, which is what we're sending to the left and right outputs, outputs one and two. If for some reason I'm using the main outputs to send a wireless ComTech feed, just a wireless audio feed to the producer or director or whomever, I might instead actually just want to send them the boom mic. Now, the reason I would do that is that I don't want them to get confused about all the different mics they're hearing at the same time. So if each of the talent of the three talent in our example here are wearing lavalier microphones, plus I'm booming them, what I don't want the producer or director hearing is all of the phase interactions that are happening when we're recording a talent with both their lavalier and a boom mic. The reason we're miking each of the people with two different mics is so that we have options in post. But I don't want them to get confused and say something like, well, gosh, this sounds really thin. It's The audio is not sounding great. Can you do something about that? Then I have to explain to them what I'm doing and, and so on and so forth. So typically what I do to, is I just send them the boom mic. And I actually generally just send them a pre-fader. So they're hearing exactly what the boom operator or I am hearing in most cases as well. So I would just set it like that. You could also set it post fader if you wanted to do that for whatever reason. So that's really kind of all that's involved there. Let me go ahead and set it back to the default here. Let's come back out and now let's look at the sub out routing. Now this is exactly the same as the output routing. It's just a different connector. So we have a 3.5 millimeter connector over here where we can send audio out. Typically that is what I am using to send wireless audio to the rest of the crew. And in this case, again, I almost always send just the boom mic. So I'll set that up to look just like that. Now, what if I'm sending audio to the boom operator? This is the same thing I would do here as well. So if I was going out the main output or the sub output, I would send them both left and right channels. I would send them um, the boom mic and both sides. Now, another kind of fancy thing I've seen other people do, I have not personally done this myself, but it's an interesting idea, is that you can send them 
the boom mic on the left channel and perhaps say you have a local microphone set up here, so a microphone that just I can talk into, and now in their right ear, I can tell them what to do. I can direct them and say, hey, you need to get a little closer to talent number two um, while they're actually booming, so while the recording's going on. Obviously, that's not going to work if I'm up really close to the set, <laughs> so I have to be farther back, um, but in those cases, that is a possibility as well, and kind of a one of the reasons you might use this kind of setup there as well. So actually, you noticed here, I can send it both. I can send both the boom mic to left and right channels in their ears, but also my voice on this local mic here that I'm using on channel eight will just go to their right ear. So you have lots of different options there. There are endless options <laughs> to a large extent when you, when you get into routing. And so hopefully having a look at those and a kind of an overview like this will help you understand what it's used for, when you may want to change the default settings, and really, again, what it comes down to is what do you need to deliver to the production and what is going to help you get the best possible sound? So what do you need to be listening to during the production based on what you're doing to get the best possible recording for the entire team? So there's an overview. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.